I have to admit that when I saw what we had coming up, I was worried we wouldn't be able to make a babble out of it at all. You know, we're, we're trying to time this thing to finish up at the end of the year, so all we had on our slate this week were two of the tiniest little books in the Bible, Titus and Philemon. And while the idea of not reading very much Bible was definitely appealing, I was afraid that we wouldn't have anything to say until I read these crazy fucking books and found out that Titus is all the bad shit about the New Testament in a bite-sized package, and Philemon is the most bizarre addendum in this book so far. Right. Now, the short books were definitely nicer this week. Gave me a chance to catch up on all the, the stuff I missed from the annals of the kings of Judah. So now, <laughs> yeah. now I'm a lot more... Uh, Required in the reading, know. exactly. And I used that time myself to plan a lovely evening for my beautiful wife, who turns 29 again on Monday and joins us for something way less fun than aging tonight. Lucinda, welcome back. You know, I've never been this close to the end of a book without having even the slightest desire to hurry up and finish it. Oh, tell me Ever. about it, right? Ever. I mean, if you told me you decided to do, you know, one verse every three weeks from here on <laughs> out and finish it in 2021 or something like that, I'd be fine. We'll get there. I'm okay yeah, with Yeah, but if we did that, we'd have to put off all the fun of the Quran next year. So it, it's kind of logical that Titus would end up being the recipient of a bullshit forgery letter that was fabricated decades after Paul's death. After all, he was kind of the Boba Fett of the Pauline epistles. You know, he just shows up once in a while to put the Corinthians in their place or wave his uncircumcised dick around at the apostolic Jews. Only gets a couple of minutes of screen time, sure, but he makes the most of it. I was dying to learn a little more about him. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't, though. All right. So it starts, as so many of them do, with Paul blowing smoke up his own ass. Mm -hmm. Paul, a servant of God, blah, 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 who has magic powers and is never wrong because of God, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> uh, but I thought it was interesting that they've expanded that I'm definitely not a liar tactic to God in this one, too. <laughs> right. Yes, that exactly. God's theme. not a liar either. Right. Yeah, it takes all the two verses to get to the words, in the hopes of eternal life that God, who never lies, promised before the ages began. Mm. And on the one hand, we have all these great examples of God lying about who will and won't get destroyed or have their tilling soil turned into iron. But even if you set all that aside, you're still stuck with a toupee fallacy. I mean, how do you fact check God? <laughs> right. And then fake Paul starts explaining to Titus why he left him in Crete, mm -hmm. which was apparently an island full of sex criminals back in the day. What it's oh, not now. <laughs> why, why did I leave you in Crete? That is an excellent question for me, real Paul of Truthistan, from you, real Titus. <laughs> I left you in Crete so you can appoint church leaders exactly like would have already done. The reason I left you in Crete was to continue with the plan that I had already wrote down for you and am now sending you a copy of just to be extra thorough. <laughs> Which, by the way, is not a forgery because I sound like this when I write real letters. Copies. Copies of letters. Real <laughs> copies of letters sound like this for me. <laughs> this is real. And then we get straight to the all-important shit we just talked about in the last book. Yeah, As right, usual. right. We had a few more stipulations for who can and can't be a bishop now, though. Mm -hmm. Apparently, in addition to your kids not being assholes, they also have to be Christians. Right. And also... You can't even be accused of debauchery. <laughs> right. Which would have made it so fun to hang out with Titus. Uh -huh. I'd love to have followed him around Crete, and then every time he thought he had a solid bishop, I'd yell, Debaucher! <laughs> <laughs> and he'd have to start all over well, again. Well, dude's been accused, <laughs> man. Sorry. sorry. And based on the book, that might actually have been what was happening. Either that or Crete was all rebellious kids and butt sex. <laughs> Nothing but wall to wall. <laughs> also, they can only have... One wife. Oh, right, right. Which means a bunch of Cretan dudes definitely demoted some wives for the job interview with Titus. <laughs> All right, it looks like you'd make a good bishop. You and your kids don't seem very debaucherous. Can't see any reason why. Spontaneous riot! No reaction. <laughs> well played. Well played, sir. Okay, just one last thing. Are the two women blowing us under the table extra wives? Are they extra? No, no. The, those are slaves, not an animal. Extra wives. And by, the, and by the way, since when is not being a drunk a prerequisite to speak for God? You guys never heard of Noah? Or all the fucking, really? uh, uh, fucking crazy bastard, uh, what was it, Ezekiel? Yeah. Tell me that dude wasn't drinking? Come on. And then by verse 10, we're on to the Jew hate. Quote, there are also many rebellious people, idle talkers and deceivers, especially of the circumcision. They must be silenced, end quote. Take that however you want to take it. <laughs> it's one thing to get deceived by some 
rebellious idol talker and then get slapped in the face with a penis. It happens <laughs> to the best of us. But if I get one more mushroom tattoo from these <laughs> deceitful idol talking Jews, I swear to fucking God. <laughs> But now, in his defense, of course, he only said especially the Jews. You know, he admitted that other people are also deceitful idol talkers, right? So it's it's less like saying black people love fried chicken and more like saying everybody loves fried chicken, especially black people. <laughs> the, the last one isn't racist. I think it might be. <laughs> Some of my best friends especially love fried chicken. <laughs> what are you talking about? And then we learned, and this, this gave me an honest guffaw, that Paul took... The Epimenides paradox, literally. <laughs> so, okay, j j just to make sure everyone knows just how stupid this is, Epimenides is the Cretan who said all Cretans are liars, and and he said it to present this paradox. Well, you know, I'm a Cretan, so if I say all Cretans are liars, I must be lying, which means that Cretans all tell the truth, which means I can't be lying. But but pretend Paul invokes it in Titus as though it was an assessment of Cretan morality. <laughs> so according to the Bible, Zeno's runner is standing still. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> you redraw the finish line, it's not a paradox. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Profound stuff from pretend Paul over there. Great job. Well, and, and even if you overlook the bit where he says that the Cretan that said all Cretans were liars was telling the truth, his actual advice to Titus is treat everyone around you like a lazy, gluttonous, vicious, lying brute <laughs> so that they'll love you more. And as much as the Christians ignore in this book, they definitely took that one to heart. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's like Don Johnson talking to his slave about Jagger. <laughs> you want me to treat him like regular white people? No. <laughs> no. No. Who's that retarded kid? Treat the Jews like a retarded Christian child. <laughs> Basically, That's yeah. best way to go. But also, if you think that everyone on the island of Crete is, quote, detestable, disobedient, and unfit for any good work, end quote, why are you so eager to sign a bunch of them up for your new church? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, great How does question. That work? For the island. And then yeah. we get into the like non-specific specifics that the New Testament is so famous for. Paul instructs Titus to teach the people there not to get so slobbering drunk they fuck couches. <laughs> Uh, he he to, to to warn them that to do good works instead of bad ones mm. you know, is very important. I mean, I mean, look, you're doing no one any good when you say be prudent. <laughs> it's 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 like shit that says drive safely, right? In case you forgot that barrel rolls don't work as well in real life. Of course, fucking be, be prudent. Right. Well, and not only is that stupid advice to give to your disciples in waiting, but apparently fake Paul didn't think fake Titus would think of that one on his own. Right. He needed to send a letter across desert and sea to remind his number three guy <laughs> that being prudent is probably a good thing. Yeah. You know Maybe. how you're... Uh... No, you're teaching all the Cretans to be shitty. Stop doing that. Stop. <laughs> I know this is a whole big 180, but just trust me on this. Roll with me. It'll work. I, I wrote down a handy list of ways to not be shitty people. It's mostly words like good and not bad. Try to memorize it. <laughs> exactly. And I'd just like to take a second to point out that both Christ and Paul, as, as presented in the Bible, are perfect models of the opposite of prudent. Mm -hmm. You know, being crucified to death and or spending the majority of your adulthood in Roman prisons is, at the very least, imprudent. <laughs> right. But, of course, the sexism can't wait for too long. So, in Chapter 2, we learn all about how wives should be chaste, obedient, good at cleaning the kitchen, and, above all, submissive. Right. Yes, exactly. And when you're already talking about women, you're practically talking about slaves already. So, you might as well use it as a segue. And this was honestly one of the worst slavery verses since Exodus 21 invoked the 48-hour rule. Right. Titus chapter 2, verses <laughs> 9 and 10 from the NRSV, quote, Tell slaves to be submissive to their masters and to give satisfaction in every respect. They are not to talk back, not to pilfer, but to show complete and perfect fidelity, end quote. And by the way, that's probably the most innocuous wording I could find in any translation. Clearly, God is all about some slavery. Loves, <laughs> Loves him shit. some slavery. And by the way, if you keep going with that verse, it basically says, tell those slaves to fucking smile while they're working so we can sell this thing. <laughs> yes, exactly. Nobody wants yeah. to see unenthusiastic bondage. It just, <laughs> it just reflects badly on everyone involved. Come on. You better laugh when I whip you, bitch. Also, Christianity includes renouncing all worldly possessions. It mm -hmm. says that over and over again in, in the book. So tell your Christian friends to give you all their shit or they're going to hell. Mm -hmm. Then cite Titus chapter 2, verse 12. Among others, yes. Yeah. He also yeah, ends the chapter by saying, let no one look down on you, which that, that seemed like an odd addition. You know, oh yeah, one more thing, 
after the be prudent and everything, mm-hmm. don't make me look stupid. I mean, try to be cool, mm-hmm. but like you don't care if other people think you're cool. Like you know, like a respectable possessionless homeless zealot who thinks all the people around him are lying <laughs> brutes. That that's what we're going for. That, and by the way, I give you full authority to be a complete asshole about it. Yes, uh-huh. rebuke the shit out of everything. Be that guy. <laughs> so yeah, apparently Paul read the game and decided to build the religion by negging people from there. <laughs> <laughs> You'd seem a lot less ugly and stupid next to the other people at my church. You should come down. <laughs> It'd be a strong aid up there. And just in case this book hasn't already tipped its hand entirely, chapter three opens with a reminder to do whatever the king tells you and always be a good, loyal citizen. I half expected the next verse to say, also, whoever found this letter probably deserves a Hummer. <laughs> or two. <laughs> yeah, it's remarkable how much God's plan for his people precisely mimics the best interest of whoever happens to be oppressing these people at the moment. Yes, uh-huh. Sit down, shut up, do your job, embrace poverty, pay your taxes, don't fight, obey your master, and do what the king says. <laughs> Primary message of the book. And if there's ever any difference of opinion, whoever has more extra skin on their <laughs> penis, they win. They win. <laughs> Speaking of which, you guys are going to need to set up a bunch of... Of dick exam checkpoints. That's <laughs> a whole big part of the plan. We didn't even at least at every get going yet. courthouse. Well, they're trying, always trying deal. to put the Ten Commandments up. They should put a fucking foreskin checkpoint up. There you go. That would be more in keeping with the religion. Right, right. There's also a bunch of talk about God and Jesus pouring out their spirit richly upon us. Hmm. But there's not enough context to say for sure whether that's a bukkake thing or a golden shower <laughs> kind of type thing. So yeah, right. Situation. Right. Well, God's a Bronze Age type of guy, as I mean. He's too big into the uh, scatological stuff. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Then he tosses out this dubious hunk of advice. Apparently, all the following things are unprofitable and worthless. Stupid controversies, mm. which kind of seems definitional, you know, if they're stupid, then by... Anyway, also, <laughs> genealogies... Nobody told the guys who wrote the Bible. Mm. Dissensions and quarrels about the law. So... <laughs> I guess I'm with him kind of on the first two because I don't like genealogies either, but how can dissension be worthless without any reference to what one is dissenting to? I mean, does this mean I can just face fuck Christians on command? I mean, what are they going to do? Dissent and quarrel about the law? <laughs> Have you read Titus? <laughs> do you know who I am? I am descended from a long line of Judean face fuckers. We are the ones who do the video. What did we say about genealogies? <laughs> what did we say? This is why we have rules. <laughs> and in the very same breath, he tells Titus that anybody who disagrees with him more than twice is sinful, perverted, and self-condemned. Yep, those are his <laughs> words. And then he closes with some random selections from his Facebook timeline. <laughs> He's looking forward to seeing Zenus the lawyer. He decided to winter in Nicopolis, and his relationship with <laughs> Artemis is complicated. <laughs> <laughs> anti-Semitism, misogyny, and slavery endorsement all in one tiny little itty-bitty book. Right. Makes you wonder why they felt like they needed the rest of this testament, really. Mm-hmm. All the yeah. important <laughs> shit is right there. We're done. We should have been done a long time ago. Well, I sure do hope this Bible eventually tells us how we're supposed to treat a, a slave after they convert to Christianity. <laughs> because I don't think I can evaluate this Jesus stuff and that whole big message if he never addresses how we're supposed to treat... <laughs> A slave Does after they convert. That's the important stuff, yeah. And, of course, the next book on the list could have been printed on a business card, so it would probably be something of an afterthought in the Bible if it wasn't so fucking weird. <laughs> All right, so the letter itself is apparently something that Paul sent along to Philemon with Philemon's slave Onesimus, and clearly there's something that Paul... Now, this is actually Paul, as far as anyone knows, and clearly there's something Paul really wants Philemon to do with his slave, but he never actually says what it is. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty much impossible to take anything of substance away from this book. Yeah. And the weirdness starts right away in this one, too. Paul identifies himself in the first verse as a prisoner of Christ Jesus and Timothy, our brother. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I get the prisoner of Jesus thing and metaphorical, you know, whatever, but is Paul Timothy's gimp, too? I don't don't get it. That would be a radical reinterpretation. I would enjoy that one way more. (laughs) And after that, he goes on what sounds like a heartfelt thanks for a pity fuck at some (laughs) point in the past. Again, no details, but apparently Paul received much joy and encouragement (laughs) from Philemon's love. Mm. Which somehow gets twisted into, I owe you a favor and I'm calling in on it. (laughs) Philemon's Philemon's sitting at home saying, that isn't how that works, dude. Yeah, right. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. Paul says, "Uh, listen, remember that runaway slave you're all pissed about? 
funny story. I found him. We talked about Jesus, and we had some gay sex, and now I'm sending him back. So, you know, if he owes you money or whatever, just put it on my tab. And then erase my tab because I saved you from eternal damnation at one time. Yeah, so, exactly. you know, you takes the money the slave has on him, and we calls it even. <laughs> <laughs> and he does it so passive-aggressively, too. I could totally make you do what I want you with my Jesus-imbued Professor Xavier powers. But I'd rather appeal to you through love. Right. Yeah, exactly. And then we get to the slave Onesimus. And at first it sounded like Paul was like imprisoned with the slave. And then the slave got out. But he was such a good prison mm -hmm. bitch that Paul wanted him back. I, I ain't get this at all. <laughs> By the way, the word Onesimus means useful. That's the name of their slave. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's useful. I'm going to send uh, adequate dirt mover back to the location. <laughs> um, yeah, he's Christian now, so be slightly nicer. <laughs> Again, retarded white kid is a good rule of thumb. <laughs> That's perfect. And then, without remotely spelling out what he wants Philemon to do, he says, I didn't want to do it without your consent, so I was hoping you'd do it voluntarily before I forced you to. Right. Uh -huh. Like, I'm going to slap you, but if you'd like, you can put a bug on your cheek, and we can act like I was just <laughs> going for that. <laughs> I just pretend we did that. I'm sorry. And then, uh, and I'm pretty sure... He talks about how sexy Onesimus is here, but I, I can't tell exactly mm, what he's going it's for. It's weird. And then he shifts gears, and it sounds less like he's asking for the slave kid back and more like he's asking Philemon to forgive him for running away. Or trying to convince him not to throw out a good slave until he's tried the asshole <laughs> out. It could, it could equally well be either, yeah. Depends on, it's all about interpretation. I, I feel like it was both, you know. What better way to offer redemption to a runaway slave than Christianity and getting sodomized by the exact slave master who he wronged. No. Yeah. Yeah. Not in a gay way, though, in like a salvation butt sex. That, I mean, <laughs> that could be a description of Christianity. What did you say, getting sodomized by the slave owner who, who you wronged? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. soteriology Sounds right, right. We, yeah. we learned that word at the beginning of the show. <laughs> and then he wraps up his whole, I want you to do this unstated thing voluntarily, bit by saying, oh, and when I get out of prison, I'm going to crash on your couch for a while. No <laughs> implication of voluntary in that one. No, He's just no, at all. not crash at all. On your couch, dude. And then he tells Philemon that Mark Ap Apophras Aristarchus, Demis, and Luke all said, what up? And, and then it's over. Yeah. And the most bizarre thing about it is that it's in the Bible. Yeah. I mean, if Paul lived in the modern day, this would be like including the angry email he sent to Arby's corporate. Right. Yes. Really yes, weird. we're just basically scrounging the world for scraps of paper that Paul might have written on at, at this point. <laughs> How do you know it's the same Paul? I, I have expected a shopping list at some point. <laughs> Find a bar napkin from Paul. And God spake thusly of tic-tac-toe. Right? <laughs> Thou shalt use the corner strategy and call Mary. For a good time. That makes no sense. <laughs> the napkin says it is so. <laughs> Do not doubt the words of the Paul napkin. <laughs> and if it give you some winning advice on tic-tac-toe, that would be the most useful section of this book, actually. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Finally nice. get some advice. Well, the good news is that we're done with letters from Paul and fake Paul at this point. Now, we, we do still have some letters, mind you, and the Vulgate attributes Hebrews to Paul, but they're mm. wrong, and it never says it's Paul within the book, so fuck off, Paul. We're done with your ass. Uh, we're going to do Hebrews in three weeks, then we knock out James and both the Peters after that, all the Johns and the Jude after that, and then it's on to Revelation. Only four more battles to go. Hooray! Hey, such a fun book club. So, are we done yet? 